If you've ever seen FPS overlays, graphs, etc. in videos and you've wondered how to do it, this video will show you exactly how. Basically, it's a piece of software that you'll install. It's compatible with all graphics cards of all manufacturers, NVIDIA, AMD, etc. And it'll not only give you the ability to show an FPS counter, but a frame time counter, VRAM usage, CPU usage, RAM usage, etc. And even graphs and a full plethora of customization, even into text color. This useful piece of software is called MSI Afterburner, or rather more specifically, RiverTuner Statistics Server. It's the bit of backend software running that a few different programs interact with that gives you the actual stats on your screen, but the easiest way to customize it by far is MSI Afterburner. Without further ado, in the description down below, you'll find a link to the MSI Afterburner website. Simply pull it up and click Download Afterburner. When the zip is done download, Loading, open it and run the MSI Afterburner installer inside it. Minimize the zip. OK, next, agree, next. And on this page here, make sure Rivertuner Statistics Server is ticked. Then next, next, install and wait for it to finish. Now, when it eventually completes, you should see a pop up like this. This is the RCSS installer. Click OK, next, agree, next, next and install. Once this installer is complete, untick show readme, finish and then in the MSI Afterburner, untick show readme and finish once more. By default, when Afterburner opens up, it may look something like this. Now, there are many different skins that you can use. Usually what you need to do is look for this cogwheel. You can change the skin on the extreme right side tab here, user interface. Usually I have it on Afterburner V3. If yours looks like this, then we're on the same page. Here, click settings. It's the same as the cog icon. Now, inside of the Afterburner properties here, head across to on-screen display. It should be the fourth tab at the very top. We can toggle the on-screen display by setting a hotkey here, show and hide separately if you prefer that. I'll use maybe control star for that. We can apply, then head across to the monitoring section and here we can customize it. Everything with a tick here shows on this section of Afterburner as a graph, but that's not what we're wondering about. Instead, when you have something selected like GPU temperature, you can tick show in on-screen display here. Then we can change it to show as just text, graph or text and graph. I'll click apply here, then head across to say Minecraft. I'll hit control star and now you can see my GPU temperature right here. Cool. Let's go ahead and customize this a bit further. I'll push this to the side, settings, monitoring, and let's go for usage, for example. I can enable it, apply, just like that. There's my usage. If instead we change it from text to text and graph, apply, you'll see now we have a GPU usage graph here. It's very difficult to see as it's green. Instead, we can click the three dots next to this here, and we're able to customize it. Color zero is the graph color. Let's make it maybe a bright red just like that. Apply, and now we can see GPU in bright red. These colors here apply to everything. We can choose between different presets at the very top, such as classic, apply, which is all orange, modern mono, which is all one color, modern web, which includes a blocky background and should be easier to see information on, but comes with a watermark, which we can remove by scrolling down. We have separators here, epilog and prologue. The prologue here, if we customize this, we can remove it by hitting backspace, like anywhere, apply, and now we've removed the watermark section at the very top. You can also remove the epilog section here. If we cut this and put this into Notepad, for example, you'll see exactly how it's made. This is a bit more advanced than what we'll go into in this video here. So for now, I'll just remove that, apply, cool. For now, we'll go back to just modern. We'll change the colors a little bit to make it a bit more readable. Just a bit brighter should do, apply, and there we go. Scrolling down to group color, we can change individual colors for each different item, variable colors, graph colors, etc. At the graph color section, you can change the graph color for each different graph. And even further down, we can change the width, etc. of all of the graphs on our screen, such as the height, etc. If we make the width negative 16 instead of 32, you should see it gets a lot shorter horizontally. You may prefer something like this. 
OK, and now we can get to adding the rest of our information. Usually, you'll want temperature, usage, and memory usage for your GPU, all enabled as text. If you want to monitor your temperature, for example, you can set it to text and graph. That way, you get a nice graph of your GPU temperature, etc. So temperature usage is text, memory usage is text, core clock you might want as text as well, memory clock, mayhaps, power usage, temperature, voltage, etc. And then we get to the CPU section. It starts with each individual CPU's temperature, then usage. Scrolling down further, we get CPU usage. This is just a general item that covers all of the CPUs listed above, which could be many. You may want this as a graph and text. Scrolling down further, we have CPU clocks, and finally, the general CPU clock, CPU power, and some more information. So, RAM usage, probably want this as text. And finally, probably what you're really looking for here, frame rate and frame time. For this, if they're grayed out, you'll need to click the tick box to start monitoring each of these. And we can enable this with preferably text and graph for both of these as such apply. Now we're running some much more useful information here. OGL may appear as DX11 or something different like that. That's essentially what the program you're monitoring is using to render its graphics. The text may be different for you. Now, obviously, these colors aren't the best, but we have minimum, average, max, 1% and 0.1% lows for frame rate, all very useful information for benchmarking, etc. If we click frame time and click the three dots once more, scrolling all the way down to graph color, we'll change CPU usage to maybe a brighter blue, but we don't have any options here. Instead, let's change the default colors at the very top. So blue will make a bright blue and the faint red color will make maybe a bright red color. Apply, that's definitely much more readable. Maybe a cyan for that and a bright pink for that or maybe yellow. Anyways, it's all up to your preference. Personally, this looks pretty good. Usually, these are the options that you'll want. Frame rate, frame time, RAM usage, CPU usage, all the way up here. Scrolling up even further, core clock for GPU, memory usage, usage, and temperature. Sweet. Now we have a very basic overlay in our game or games, and we can use the hotkey that we prepared earlier to toggle this at any time. Awesome. So when you fire up literally any game on your PC, as long as it can hook into it, it can display an on-screen graph such as this. Usually in super competitive games with invasive anti-cheats, such as Valorant, this may not work for you. And things like Counter-Strike that disable overlays completely, this could also be disabled as well. If we were to close MSI Afterburner, you'll see that the overlay disappears. However, opening it again, we see the graph, and of course, Afterburner when it opens up. We have more than just one program running on our computer, however. We have both Afterburner and Rivertuna Statistics Server. If we click the up arrow for our icons on our start bar, we'll now see a frame counter with a picture here. This is RTSS. If we double click this, it'll open up a new window here, and we can further customize RTSS here as well. We can set different profiles for different programs, but what we're really focusing on is the application detection level. This here, if we hover over it, will tell us how aggressively it'll look for games to try and hook into and show the information on. Stealth mode right below this can be used if anti-cheats don't like how this is working. However, playing around with these settings is your preference. Obviously, if a game doesn't want you using something like this to display frame rates, it's probably best not to even try. We can close it here and enjoy our frame rate counters. Anyways, that's really about it for this super quick guide. Now you know how to get an in-depth FPS counter in any game, really. So thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot. Hopefully you found this video useful, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.